Good morning, modern starters. It's a nice frosty morning out this morning. 23 degrees out and it's supposed to get up in the high 50s today. So that means the maple sap should flow pretty good. Yesterday we collected about 32 gallons of maple sap. So the sap's starting to flow. I'm curious to see how much sap we'll collect today. Today we're gonna build some cold frames on the new garden boxes that we made yesterday. So that way we can start our vegetables early, get some spinach and lettuce growing probably about a month sooner than we normally would in our climate here. It'll be nice to have some nice homegrown greens here on the homestead. Figaro, I was wondering where you've been. I haven't seen you all morning. Good morning, mister. I was worried about you. Huh? Where'd you sleep? The boys are still sleeping again this morning. Oh, they heard us. Good morning, Caleb. Little man. Zeke. You guys ate all your hay yesterday. Holy moly. That's not like you. I'll have to get you a fresh bale. I guess maybe not a bale. How about a flake? That sounds good. Morning, girls. Do your feet feel better since you got your pedicure yesterday? Huh? You girls all get to go to the nail salon? Good morning, hope a dope. No barking, tan man. Good boy. No barking. Good boy. Good boy. Watch your noggins. You girls have got to let me in. If you don't let me in, you can't get your feed. There you go. I forgot to check on the chicks. We better see how they're doing. It did get kind of chilly last night. They're looking good. I've been really happy with how well they've been doing with all of our cold weather we've been having. We've had them here one week now? Yeah. They've been here for a week now and man, that's doing so well. We lost two the first night. One of them was the one that had the leg issue that we had to separate, so I'm not surprised there. And the second one got trampled. We've had really good luck with the chicks so far, so fingers crossed it keeps going that way. The chickens are like, hey, where's our grain? We're coming, we're coming. How do we already have a loose chicken, huh, honey? You ladies need to stay in. I'm gonna have to clip your wings, aren't I? I think the issue is is there's still frost in the ground and that fence is staying high and the chickens are looking for good food. Huh ladies? You wanna go back in? Hey, there you go. All right, we need to grab all the material we're gonna need to build our cold frames. Gonna need some screw guns. One, two, our drill. Our saw. See a tape measure. We're gonna want our chalk line. We have a bunch of fittings. Right here we have T's, they're three quarter inch to half inch this way. I have some small stainless steel screws. I'm also gonna grab a seven eighths inch Forstner bit. Let's see if we can use that at one point. And we're gonna need, oops, we're gonna need some three and a half inch long screws. We're gonna want our drill bits. And we're gonna want our countersinking bit. We're using half inch PVC.
figure out how I feel like we started yesterday's video. So yesterday we built our raised bed garden boxes. I'll put a link to that video right here and in the video description down below. Today we're gonna to be building our cold frames to go on top of them. We live in growing zone 4B, so we cannot start planting our gardens, a normal garden up here until Memorial Day. So by building these cold frames, we'll be able to get a two month start on our normal growing season. Alright, so we need to cut four 2x4s at 52 inches. If you're building one of these cold frames, their measurements aren't gonna be exactly to ours because your the length of your garden bed might be different. So I'm gonna go 125. But what we wanna do is we wanna have this two by four go past over to this two by 10. So when we screw them, they're connecting these two boards with another anchor point, if that makes sense. So I have to use 12 footers to do this. I've seen a few other videos on these. I'll put the link to the original video I saw this first made on down below. We're kind of, we are, I'm modifying it a little bit. By putting the two by four this way, we're making a strong back so we can push our bow two by 10 in and it'll give it more strength. them at 45 and an eighth.
So this is the base for our cold frame to sit on. So next we're gonna make the frame that will hinge. This time I want our two by fours to overlap this way. Okay. So let's go to the other side and just double check our measurements. I'm 118. One eighteen. Okay, so I need to cut two of them at one hundred and eighteen inches. I have movie night tonight. We're gonna put some screws going this way and then we're gonna do some pocket screws going the other direction. Good. Okay. Good. I need your hand with a chalk line. You like that job? Yeah. An inch here. So that's gonna be, say two and a half in the end. Let's do that, make it easier. Two and a half, two and a half, two and a half. Put it right so it, the, the rope goes right through it and then let go. Bam, so take that end. Go over here. Same thing. Okay. Bam. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing to the other one. So you're going from here to here or there to there? I'm gonna go two and a half. And two and a half. So our first one will mark two and a half. And that's where our first one's gonna go. And then you wanna come hold the tape measure on that mark. So we have 120 inches, 10 feet, 40. 80 and you good okay so then I will go 
80 and 40. I'm using a 7 8 inch Forstner bit to make our pilot holes. figure out the height of our hoops we've got an equation to do and then we're going to subtract two inches on this one mm -hmm. because we want this hoop to be a little bit lower so if we want to put a second hoop on the outside over it we can so we need to get the distance in between the two holes yep so 46 divided by two, divided by two. which is 23 mm -hmm. so 23 times 3.14 which is pi yep. equals 72.2 so 70 inches Let's cut one and see how it works. So we're going to need three of our three quarter inch to half inch tees. We're going to slide them on one, two, three. There we go. I'm going to take a little stainless steel screw from the underside so it's not hitting the plastic. Bam. Yep. Boom. Get an overall length. Yeah. So one eighteen.
You got it. Yeah. There we go. Does that look straight? greenhouse plastic we got was folded up and there's creases in it so I'm trying to use these creases to mark to line up the plastic on top of our PVC to help keep everything nice and square so it'll look pretty at the end using these half inch snap clamps that I got off of Amazon they're gonna hold the greenhouse plastic to the PVC pipe I'll put a link in the video description down below for the snap clamps Summer snow, when it falls on you, your blood runs cold. I'm using a piece of three quarter inch thick pine board and screwing it to the top of our cold frame and sandwiching the plastic in between it. And on the second side, I am pulling the plastic as tight as we can to keep it nice and taut so the high tunnel looks nice and neat and we don't have to worry about it flapping in the breeze. So this one we're gonna need to bunch it together. Pull it down. Correct. Yeah. Until your legs gave way And you cried and got back up again And it's real to think that I could fly Cross a broken bridge in the fading light Never thought ahead of my two feet Never had a care in the world you see Have you heard from the sky?
Look at all that room. Now we just need all the soil to, to thaw. We're getting oh, a lot closer. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to do that earlier. No. I bet you in a day or two of sun and we'll be ready to plant our early spring crops in there now. Here comes some spinach and lettuce and broccoli. Awesome. Can't wait. We're excited to have the cold frame all built. Now we can get the rest of the soil defrosted and we'll be getting our spinach and lettuce and broccoli going in these cold frames pretty soon. I hope you guys are able to take advantage of this design. This is not my original design. I've seen some other videos on it. I'll have that link in the video description down below. And I'm also gonna link the different parts and pieces we got from Amazon and then the half inch PVC pipe and the three quarter inch to half inch PVC tees you can get at your local hardware store. So thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey with us guys. You are a true blessing to us in our homestead. Sorry I didn't get to show the afternoon chores but Willow is getting close and we need to finish up on her birthing stall because any day now she could be having her baby. So that we'll get more into that tomorrow. So thanks for coming along and we'll see you right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres.